Morning everyone. Um, September morning. Yeah, have a spin round Hazel and, and show them what it looks like out here. It's uh, kind of sun, bit of sun, bit of grey. It's all very damp. It rained last night. It's very green and lush, but the trees are starting to turn, getting a bit of autumn colour about them. A few leaves starting to fall. So there we are. Temperature's still good. That's a nice spin round. Uh, so day temperatures are about 18, 19 degrees, going down to about 10 at night at the moment as a approximation anyhow. Um, and we're working on the boat obviously, trying, still trying to get her closed in. I glued up the, the frame for the sliding hatch yesterday, so that's in progress. Um, yeah, coming on well. Um, anyhow, I thought I'd have a little talk about something that was, that was brought up a few weeks back for this video. Um, Garrick, who sends me lots of challenging questions, makes me think, which I appreciate. Um, one of the things he was asking about was uh, my thoughts on the Jordan series Drogue and uh, yeah, issues relating to that. I don't know how much you guys know, so excuse me if, I, if some of this is teaching my grandmother to suck eggs. Um, but basics. Roger Taylor um, is known for his, not only for being the drummer with Queen, but also for his single-handed sailing up in the Arctic. I do believe they're different Roger Taylors. Um, so he sets, he buys fairly small boats, production boats, in the, in the sort of mid-20 feet range, sets them up for single-handed sailing, junk rig, um, and he always sails for sort of always normally sails for six week or so durations up into the Arctic Ocean starts from somewhere in Britain and goes up into the Arctic so he sets his boats up for, for single-handed sailing in in potentially extreme conditions uh, in a low-tech manner so if you don't know about Roger Taylor well worth looking into you find him on the web there's videos as there's, there's, he's got a blog Good stuff, recommend it. Um, anyhow, one of the things he does, let's get to the point. One of the things he does is he sets up a situation, some kind of locker, some kind of container in the cockpit area, aft obviously, um, that the Jordan Series Drogue can deploy from very easily. And the Jordan Series Drogue is a very long kind of line rope with a series of I think, I think several hundred small parachute drogues along its length. Um, so this can deploy and obviously in, in if the weather's getting up a bit and he's, he's I'm sure running downwind in, in storm conditions, this drogue can deploy from the stern. And the other thing he does that's important to know is that after the boat, either side I believe, he puts on heavy metal chain plates that are that are bolted through the boat in in a in a strong position that this drogue deploys from. So the the drogue's deployed aft, connected to these chain plates, in which he is confident are strong enough to hold the forces. And this is all very sensible. And Garrick asked me if I was thinking of such a thing, and I'll be honest, I hadn't before he asked. And it's certainly something worth considering. Now, I thought about it a lot. And at the end of the day, uh, I'm going to say horses for courses. Um, we as boat designers, each one of us, have to think about the uses that we're planning to put our boat to. Now, I know at least two of you, at least two of you are thinking of, or are actually planning on building a Benford Dory yourselves. Um, at least some others of you are building boats yourselves or preparing to build boats yourselves. So perhaps this is obvious, but we need to put a lot of thought into the sort of uses we're planning to put our boat to. What are we building for? What conditions are we going to be sailing in? Um, in the cruising I've done in the past, I've only ever used a drogue once and I never imagined I would ever use a drogue to be honest with you, but I did take one with me. We'll wander around the boat and I'll show you what I've got. This is, this is my drogue. 
obviously not a Jordan series. I picked this up at Popeyes in, in Vancouver, second hand, and just took it along just in case. It's a canvas funnel with these fairly heavy duty ropes attached to it. It's got a small opening at the small end. An eye there for, for attaching a rope to pull it out of the water and, and the, 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 the rope that you deploy it from attaches here. So it's a big sort of funnel thing, heavy canvas, with this galvanized metal ring at the front there. And uh, stows away fairly easily. I say I've only ever deployed it once and, and it did the job. Um, conditions. The conditions were rough. We weren't comfortable and we felt like deploying it. I deployed it from the bow. Um, I've mentioned elsewhere, I think, uh, Hal Roth in, in After 50,000 Miles says that if you deploy such a drogue from the bow, it the boat tends to, it slows down your drift, but the boat tends to lie um, at 90 degrees to the waves. But in my experience, the one time I deployed it, that wasn't the case. It certainly slowed down our drift, it slowed down our drift enormously, I think. And the boat laid at, certainly not bow to the waves, but about uh, 45, 50, 60 degrees to the waves, which did make the ride a lot more comfortable. It was, it was good, I was happy with it. Um, for me, I will be taking this bow, this bow, oh, this drogue. And that will do me, I say horses for courses. My plan, and what I'm building this boat for, is, is for Karen and me, mainly, to have a pleasant time, <laughs> let's be honest. We want to sail in nice conditions, um, in lovely, warm, and sunny, and pleasant, hopefully out of the way places. places. Now, as Garrett points out, climate's changing, weather patterns are changing. It's certainly getting more and more difficult to predict the weather that you're going to meet. And at some stage, will I be crossing oceans? Maybe. I'm certainly building the boat with the, with the intention, with the ability to be able to cross oceans. And there you're putting yourself into a situation where on a longer passage, three week passage, shall we say, for example, um, weather predictions getting harder, isn't it? So you do need to be confident that your boat is up to the job. Um, so as designers, as builders, you know, we, we buy a design, don't we? But, but nonetheless, we apply our own design elements to that design that we've built. So we are designers and builders. We need to build our boats beyond the strength that we think they need to have for the sailing that we're going to do. We need to make them stronger than, than they need to be for that, don't we? And I think I'm doing that. I think I'm doing that. So for me, drogue-wise, what I need is, I, I will be taking this drogue. What I need is I need to be sure that the cleats I'll be attaching it to are up to the job. The cleat of the bow needs to be strong anyhow because that's where your anchor's being tied off to so so that needs to be the framing behind it the, the backing plate the whole thing needs to be massively strong doesn't it and the cleats at the stern also need to be capable of, of carrying the sort of forces that a drogue like this will apply and that's what i'll be doing wild horses won't drag me into the arctic i can tell you that much but um thoughts and you guys you know everybody needs to think about their own use and design their boat to suit and i do thoroughly recommend looking at what roger taylor has done with his ming ming 2 and the systems he's applied i say low tech strong capable for a single-handed sailor i hope some of that makes sense i hope it wasn't too much of a rant um i thought i'd talk about drogues and design thinking Thanks for being patrons. See you guys. Bye.